Yeah, that sucker's rotating. Boy. Everybody yet ready to go in the basement? I mean, I don't know, I can't tell. I think it's going, I don't know which way it's heading. It's heading east. God, that is freaky, look at that. Go away. Be normal. Wind's starting to pick up. Wow. Yep, wind's coming. Well, checking some uh, crops here from that storm. And we're at home here, and now I'm at the old farm looking at my beans here. A little bit of damage at home, maybe 10% corn and the oats. Flax means a little bit on the flax, the flax not showing much, but the soybeans here, these, these aren't insured. I don't have hail insurance on the beans. It's kind of pointless to have it on beans, but um, you can see all the leaves on the ground though. A lot more damage here. Look at that whole thing down here. All those leaves just tattered. Yeah, I was trying to see because I got I got to spray these pretty soon here next week. Some uh, weeds coming now, so pretty easy to see. There was a lot more damage over here, so I'm trying to look at the flax here a little bit, but yeah, there's a lot more a lot more petals on the ground here. You can see there's some tattering too from the yeah yeah a little bit. I mean flax flax is pretty tough. But it's at this stage, it, it is pretty tough, ropey. So it can, uh, it can withstand quite a bit. But yeah, seeing this, there's, seeing this on the ground, there's, we missing a, a damage right here. So yeah, I'm seeing a lot more damage here, for sure, for sure. Just found these suckers laying here. Yep. Four, three bowls. I know a lot last year, my little bit of flax I had, it kind of, you know, looked like this, the little bit I had. But when it was blooming though, it didn't get a, get a rain at all. So it had all this material, but the, the seed bowls though were uh, not very filled, maybe five or six seeds per bowl, which isn't very much. So all that material and slow going and I mean, still did okay yet, you know, average, you know, it's always a win for flax, but. But yeah, this is like, it's like been a little bit, it's a little bit warm for blooming, but it, uh, well, as long as it gets a little bit of rain, that, that's, this is the most important stage for the flax. Hey, looks like that Liberty's working. Look at that. Smoking. That changed, that sprayed that, what, two days ago? Smoked. See the yellow. Yeah, just just in time too. Spraying the beans just in time. I'm starting to see a couple blooms on here. Yep. These are the first seeded beans. Yeah, I can see just a couple blooms just starting. Didn't see that the other day. Just in time. These are earlier maturing beans, so they're uh yeah. So they're a little bit further along than the rest of the beans I gotta spray. So yeah, that stuff is you can see it's starting to wilt. Burn in it. It's take, taking care of it. Put some Roundup down too with it. Experimenting again this year. Beans don't look too bad. They don't look too bad, but they seem slow again this year. I think because of all the rain, not as much heat. They seem slow again this year. The beans. The corn. The corn is speeding up quite quite nicely now. Yeah, this corn does not look as nice as it, used, as it did the other day. Gosh darn it! Stupid hail. It doesn't look as bad yet. I think it was it was kind of protected here a little bit from those trees there. Kind of protected a little bit, but yeah, some vol volunteer wheat from last year I had here. A little bit of volunteer wheat. That's what I see a lot here. 
volunteer wheat. But yeah, the, like I said, the corn here is chest high. Yeah, it looked a lot nicer the other day when I was here. But I suppose. I'm gonna go, it's enough crop inspection for the day, I guess, for now, until we have another storm, I guess. But yeah, I suppose. Really, this field actually isn't that bad. Like I say, I just don't really see a whole lot of weeds. I mean, it's canopy duck. Well, the only thing I did on here was, uh, what did I put on here? I didn't use any atrazine on this because it was, uh, I didn't have any on hand. I needed a spray amongst other things trying to get done. So I just used Roundup and a little bit of dicamba on here early on. And it, it, it did wonders, it did wonders. So, but yeah, I suppose. This is this is all just, this is all gravel here. There used to be a building here many years ago, old building. So it's probably some cement, to just super compaction here. So I suppose I'm gonna go out and roll some bales before it. As it wants to storm again, so good chance of rain again tonight. So I think that wind all of a sudden backed off. It was like 20 mile an hour there. You know, yeah, we're getting to be big time operators here. Not really. Kind of a transitioning, migrating down here to the this well we put in last year. This slow well. I want to shut the pump off. I don't uh, run enough today. Maybe it's off. Nope, it's still running yet. But kind of transition down here. You know, this is the well that constantly runs. You know, doesn't pump a whole lot. Maybe it's uh. What did it come to, like three quarter gallon a minute we have it set for, something like that? Or was it a little more than a gallon we have it set at? I don't remember where it's, where it's set at again right now. Um, it's not very fast, but you know, we, see, we don't have that many acres, but let this slowly fill. We still got the uh, wells, farm well and the well down south. In case we need just a lot of water for a day, that's where, uh, that's coming in handy right there. But, uh, Basically a hot load tank, or if you just need extra water, but that's a hot load mixing tank so we can mix spray in there. It's coned on the bottom, so it cleans out real easy. So if you got to go like to our old farm or a couple of land fields further away, you know, especially like spraying Liberty, you know, need a lot of water, stuff like that. So still work in progress at trying to get some more, um, a couple more fittings. Um, we got another shuttle on there just for clean water. Um, where we got a rinsed up, we got a little pump on there. We got a little pump underneath that so we can pull water from here too. So we always got uh, pressurized water when we need it for cleaning stuff out and everything. And that trailer too, I want to make it for um, fire, fires as well for like harvest. Or if we're in a really in a drought too, for bailing too, we can uh, have some water in there, have the pump on there then too. And in case there's a fire, it can be the first line of defense for stuff then. So. Kind of, well, technically making it a little more complicated with more things, you know, than just having just a, a tank with the mixing cone and a pump, you know, by a well. But, you know, getting a little bit more to it, but kind of just to give us a little more options, really. So, work in progress. My, my brother's been the one who's been working on most getting this mostly set up as he has time. So, tinkering with this year, figuring it out, fine tuning it. So, hopefully, next year it'll be uh, good to go with then. So, as long as we have the manpower basically so but it would still work like if i have to say spray at the old farm or something like that even if i'm by myself i can uh um technically uh you know fill here fill the spray hot load that i can take that to the old farm then come back get the spare spray and then fill out then the spraying then and so one tree one tree one tree. There ain't much left on that tree anymore. <laughs> Brent's all the way over there. Bunch. So. And that's the only worst damage we had. Well, I guess with some hail, I can see some thunderstorms way over there in the southeast. You can see the big thunderheads there, but. Yeah, some crop damage up here from the last couple storms, too. Happy roof in heaven. So like I can see that, as I mentioned before, that's about what I see 
every day or, or every other day. Storms off in the distance or storms coming through us. The storms down here, storms up there. There's always a, always a storm system going through somewhere. I figured I gotta show this real quick. I'm mowing a ditch up here. Oats up here, they're super tall, three feet up here at least, but that tree there, look at this branch. Look at that branch, that's huge. I'm surprised that didn't hit the power line. That branch, that is that is crazy. Just thought I had to show that. That's the type of weather we've been having this year. There's any more branches in here. Well, I can't believe it. We're done spraying. Yippee ki -yay. Just a extra chemical to put away that they didn't need. So. Got done here this morning. I was just drawn out. <sighs> just tight windows. But kind of got me thinking here with spraying here, finishing up spraying here a little bit. Um, for us anyways, like we've never, ever, ever have used a fungicide. Ever. Insecticides, we've used them maybe two or three times in the last 20 years maybe. Not really not like a whole field, but just more or less like the boundaries of a couple fields, grasshoppers mainly. How much does uh, you think like the fungicides and insecticides actually create more chemical resistances in weeds for like, you know, amaranth and water hemp, kochia, whatever the weed may be, um, you know, do you think there is an indirect correlation in regards with use of fungicides and insecticides because you know those two things mostly are non-selective they will basically kill you know fungicides will kill every fungus bacteria whatever it'll it'll kill a lot insecticides the same way too they're going to kill a crud ton of bugs good and bad it's just got something to do with all the biology the the bugs and the natural processes of either it's fungus or bacteria eating the plants, those weeds, or bugs eating the plants or weeds, um, eating seeds. You know, if they're tiny enough seed and the bugs, they will, you know, just like grasshoppers too, they will eat. So it seems like everybody's got to apply this fertilizer. You got to spray this down. You got to apply fungicide. You got to apply insecticides. Like, what are you even working with? And what are we doing? Is what I got to ask. What are we doing? You know, it's like with our alfalfa, like most of our alfalfa is on organic ground. Like it's in that organic rotation program. You know, we take it out of crop production. Probably we have a hay crop, but if we get getting too much weed pressure or if it's not performing well, you know, we'll plant a hay crop in there for however many years, as long as it produces good. And, you know, a couple of those fields, I will spread, spread manure on it. Maybe, but usually I like to put it on the crop fields first. Um, but I have done it for 10 times on those alfalfa fields. But other than that, though, like, it's it's all dependent on Mother Nature. And they, a lot of those fields, they, they produce so well. I mean, it's not, not to say that you're going to have some dips and some yield some year either with certain bugs or fungus or something like that or disease or something like that. Like I said, there was, there was one year where we had, I think, soft flies and there's something else with the wheat that one year, too. That could have been, like eight, nine years ago or something like that. I don't even remember what, what it was again, but I think it was soft flies and there was something else too with the wheat where kind of had a yield hit for that year. But then after that, the year after then, like there was nothing wrong, nothing wrong. So just whatever happened, Mother Nature took care of it then. At least for us up here, we have good, decent, halfway decent crop rotations. So that helps too. It's not just corn and beans, corn and beans, corn and beans. We got wheat, we got flax, sometimes rye. Rarely a barley anymore, but you know, there's you know, there's there's other crops we can throw in or or hay crop. So you always have something on a rotation, something else planted and so we keep that ever changing environment for the biology, so must be must have been doing something right all these years, so I might as well show some of the roads here. 
Looks like a dirt trail, doesn't it? It's rough. Oh man. This when you have competent, really good county employees. This is this is what you get. Really good work. Great work. Massive ridge, excellent. It's bad when this tractor even rides rough on here. That's uh, that's something else. <laughs> that's something else. There, it looks like a dirt road. 